please hit subscribe. This problem appears at the qualifying examinations for applicants for Japanese government or med scholarships 2020. This problem is from the 2020 physics questionnaire for the undergraduate scholarships. The answer key and original questions are linked in the description. Problem 4. A hot air balloon of mass M is shown in figure 4. The volume of the airbag is V. The mass M does not include the mass of the air inside the bag. The bottom of the airbag is open, and the air pressure inside the bag is equal to the surrounding air pressure, P. The burner sitting on the basket is used to heat the airbag inside. The molar mass of the air is denoted by lowercase m, and the acceleration of gravity is denoted by lowercase g. The air is an ideal gas, and the universal gas constant is denoted by r. The temperature of the surrounding air is T sub O. Let us now list down the quantities that were mentioned in the problem. First is the uppercase M, which is the mass of the balloon without the gas. So it's the frame of the balloon and everything else except the ideal gas that's inside or outside the balloon. And this is fixed. Then we have the volume V, which is the volume of the balloon inside of which is the gas. And this V is the volume of the gas inside the balloon, and this is also the volume of the gas that was displaced by the balloon. So the volume of the gas outside the balloon that is displaced because of the expanding, because of the expansion of the balloon. The lowercase m is the molar mass of the gas. It is the grams or kilograms per unit mole of gas. And so this is fixed and this doesn't change. This only depends on the chemical composition of the gas. Then we have P, which is the pressure inside and outside of the balloon. So this is fixed in the problem. This doesn't change. Then we have T sub O, which is the temperature outside of the balloon. And again, the problem is stated in such a way that this is fixed. The temperature outside the balloon does not change because there's an unlimited reservoir of, of air outside the balloon. So we can think of it as not changing. Then we have some ideas here to remember. The gas temperature inside the balloon can change. So although the temperature outside the balloon, which is T sub O, although that remains constant, because there's just a lot of gas outside the balloon, the gas inside the balloon, the temperature of that can change because of the burner. And then, as the temperature changes, according to the problem, the pressure and the volume does not change. And so, the amount of gas has to give. That means, as you heat the gas inside the balloon there will be fewer and fewer molecules inside the balloon and so the amount of gas inside the balloon that is the n the number of moles can change and then we have the ideal gas law this is to remind ourselves when we are dealing with with gases and ideal gases it is always useful to recall the form of the ideal gas law this form which is PV equals nRT. Here, R is the universal gas constant. N is the number of moles. V, the volume of the gas. P, the pressure. And T, the absolute temperature. After the air inside the bag is heated by the burner, the temperature of the air becomes T. And the problem is, find the density of the air inside the bag. So we would like to know the density after the heating occurred. And we are talking about the gas inside the balloon. So let's think about density because that's what we're looking for. That is defined to be the mass of the gas inside the balloon over the volume of the gas inside it. And the volume of that is, is constant. It's fixed to V. According to the problem, that is the 
the volume of the balloon. And for the mass, we're only talking about the mass of the gas inside that balloon. And if we look at the, the given from the problem, it looks like the way we're going to obtain the mass is through the number of moles here and the molar mass. Because if we recall, molar mass means it is the mass per unit mole. And n is just the number of moles. So if we multiply the number of moles times the unit mass per, or rather the mass per unit mole, then we can get the total mass of that gas for the given number of moles. And this is what we mean. So the density here, we get the mass by multiplying the number of moles of gas inside the balloon times the molar mass. Again, molar mass is the mass of the gas per unit mole. So the mole and the mole here cancel. And now we have this, but this is not in the choices and definitely N is not in the choices. So we have to express it using another way. And the relationship that we have is actually the, the ideal gas law. And so let's try to manipulate the ideal gas law to give us a value of N sub in or the moles inside the gas. So inside the balloon, the ideal gas law can be written as follows. P V. So that's the pressure and volume inside the gas that's given in the problem or rather inside the balloon as given in the problem. N sub I N is the number of moles of gas inside the balloon. R is a constant and T is given to be the temperature of the air inside the balloon. If we manipulate this a little bit, we can find the value of N sub in because that's what we're looking for in here. And we see that if we divide that by RT, if we divide this by RT and here by RT, and then we divide again by V here and by V here, we get this expression. So we already have N over V and that's already almost like this. We only need M to get the density. And so we multiply both sides by M. This is what we get. M times this, well, it's M, M times this, and this is the density. And therefore, the value of density can be obtained by, by this expression, which is this. Next, we need to find the buoyant force acting on the balloon. And the buoyant force is the force upward created by the air surrounding the balloon. And that causes the balloon to rise at some point. The way we compute the buoyant force is through Archimedes' principle, which states that the amount of buoyant force is actually equal to the weight of the gas displaced by the balloon. So the gas that is displaced by the balloon is the gas that would have been here in this volume if the balloon did not exist. So because the balloon is here, some of those gas that would have been here is now displaced. And we need to find the weight of that gas that is displaced. So now it's, it's displaced, it's now scattered outside in the fluid, in the air outside of the balloon. And we need to find the mass and the weight of that gas. So again, we stated here, so the weight of something is just the mass of that thing times the acceleration due to gravity, g. So that is the weight of the balloon is, or rather the weight of the gas displaced by the balloon is equal to the mass of the gas displaced by the balloon times the acceleration due to gravity. And again, the mass here, it looks like we can find it using the molar mass and the number of moles of the gas outside the balloon. Again, the molar mass is the same for inside and outside the balloon because it only depends on the chemistry of the gas, but the, the number of moles would, could be different. So outside the balloon, let's say there are N sub O number of moles of, of gas that was displaced. So if we continue outside the balloon, we are looking for, for that N sub O. And again, we use the ideal gas. We have PV equals the amount of gas displaced R times again T sub O because T sub O is the temperature outside the balloon. And again, we're looking at the gas outside the balloon here. 
So we can solve for n sub o. Now that we have n sub o, we can actually find this quantity. We just multiply by m, and then we also multiply by g, of course. So this is what we get pv rt sub o so that's from here and the m is also from here and the g is from here and therefore this is the correct answer the next part of the problem goes the balloon starts rising from the ground when the temperature of the air inside the bag is t sub 1 now we need to find t sub 1 now we think about when the balloon starts rising and that is when all the upward forces equal all the downward forces so the upward force the only upward force here is actually the buoyant force which we computed in the previous question and the downward forces acting on this are the mass of the balloon itself excluding the air times the acceleration to gravity in other words that's the weight of the balloon itself plus the weight of the gas inside the balloon so those are the two forces acting downwards. So when those forces are equal, meaning the downward forces and the upward forces are equal, that's when we can tip the balloon to start rising. And therefore, the condition is that the buoyant force, which is the upward force, equals the weight of the balloon plus the gas inside it. And we already know the buoyant force. This is from the previous question, question two. So we write it here, and now we just need to compute the weight of the balloon plus the gas inside. And we know that the weight is just the mass times the acceleration to gravity. So we already know the mass of the balloon itself, which is this capital M. Now we just need to find the gas inside, or rather the mass of the gas inside the balloon. So again, we just write it here. Now this mass, m sub in so this is the mass of the gas inside the balloon at temperature t sub 1 again we we use the relationship that th that mass is just the molar mass times the number of moles of gas inside that balloon so that's this relationship so again we use the ideal gas law to compute this and it's the same manipulation from the previous two questions so we we have here PV is the same. It did not change. What changed here is the temperature because this is now the temp the temperature now inside the balloon is T sub one. And this is what we're looking for. At what temperature does the buoyant force equal the weight of the balloon and the gas inside it? And we can get an N, N sub N. Now we just multiply it by, by M. So that's what we got here. We multiply it by M and the total thing, the total force, or mass is multiplied by g to get the total force downward or the weight so now we have we have this buoyant force and we have this weight here now we just need to equate them and so the balloon starts rising when this buoyant force equals the weight in other words this equals this and right off the bat we can cancel the g's Continuing, we had this ex expression, the relation, this relationship, and now we just we just manipulate it to obtain this. So we just move the m to the other side, and now we want the t sub one here. So we flip the numerator and the denominator, and this is what we get. And now the r's cancel, and finally we obtain this, which matches this one. Now they ask us to compute the actual value of t sub 1 if the other values of the variables, if the other variables have the following values as stated here in the question. So we start from what we got from the previous question. So this is what we got from the previous question. And just, just to have fewer computations, I decided to divide the numerator and the denominator by mpv. By doing that, instead of computing for this here, I get a 1 there. And now in the numerator, I don't even have to compute that. So now I just have to compute that once in the denominator here. Now I just replace everything. And also, 
we don't have to worry about significant figures here because all of them has two significant figures, all of the things in the choices. So we just we just continue with replacing the the values here. And this is what we get when we replace the things. And one tip here is to first sum all the exponents of the tens and then do the cancellations when possible, like the three and the three here. And for example, if I do the sum for the exponents of the tens, that will be two plus two, four. And in the denominator, that's minus two plus five. So that's plus three and plus three, six. So this is four here and this is six here. So there's a two remaining in the denominator. And so that becomes like this, 300 on the numerator. And then here we get the two that remained. And then the three and the three here cancel. So we have five and 8.3 and we have 2.9 in here. Now this is 290, this whole thing. Then I just multiplied it here and here. And I noticed that this becomes 41.5. So in the exam, we are not allowed to use calculators. So we, we want to estimate as much as possible. But this one is, is not very hard. So eight times five is just 40. So this is around 41.5. But when I do the subtraction, I felt like it might be easier if I round this down to 40. So I do that. And if I do that, if I round this down to 40, that will be 290 minus 40. So I get 250 in here. And the numerator, the 290 times 300 is not very hard. So I, I just put 8.7 times 10 to the fourth. And now again, I can cancel 10 to the fourth by 100 here. So I get 8.7 over 2.5 times the remaining exponent is 2, so 100. And now 8.7 over 2.5 i could try to compute this precisely but even before doing that we noticed that if you have 3 times 2.5 you get 7.5 here and therefore this value must be greater than 3 because this is the numerator is greater than 7.5 and so i know that the t1 i'm looking for is greater than 300 because 3 times 100 at the same time i also know that 2.5 times 4 must be 10, but 8.7 is less than 10. Therefore, this value of t sub 1 we're looking for is less than 4 times 100, so less than 400. And the only, the only choice we have for that is actually letter D in here. If you learned something new today, Please help my channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for the notifications. See ya!